gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, I make life be worthwhile Dwells in your eyes And the spell of your smile Dennis Day is brought to you by Palm Olive Soap and Colgate Dental Cream. Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. <laughs> the Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, George Dooning in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. <laughs> Here's Dennis to sing Love Somebody. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, but I won't say who. I get feeling warm and gay when she sends her smile my way. I would marry her today. But who she is, I will not say. I love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, but I won't say who. Don't know why she acts so shy. Really, I'm a harmless guy. Hope she doesn't pass me by. But if she did, I'd die. I know I'd die. I love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, but I won't. I won't say who. Now, here is a very important announcement. Palm Olive Soap is giving away prizes worth $67,000, a grand prize of $25,000 in one lump sum, or $100 a month for life. And that's not all. There are over 2,000 prizes in Palm Olive's big treasure chest contest. Ford sedans, Westinghouse laundromat, from Silver Fox scarves, Toastmaster toasters. And it's easy to enter. Complete the last line of this jingle. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get Palm Olive soap today. Da 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 da. Write your last line on a plain sheet of paper or get an official entry blank from your dealer giving complete rules. Include your own and dealer's name and address and mail with the big word Palm Olive from the front of the wrapper of one regular and one bath size cake of Palm Olive soap to Box 92, New York 8, New York. Now, here's the jingle once more. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get Palm Olive soap today. Da 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 da. Mail your entry to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. Get Palm Olive soap for a lovelier complexion. Remember, doctors prove Palm Olive's beauty results. <laughs> Well, tonight, excitement mounts at fever pitch in the little town of Weaverville, for tomorrow is the traditional football game between Weaverville High and their bitter and hated rivals, Middletown Prep. Needless to say, every loyal Weaverville alumnus is praying for his team to win, for when one spends four years at a school, one becomes enormously attached to it. And our young hero, Dennis Day's feelings, go even deeper than that, having been there for seven years. <laughs> We find him now in the living room of the Anderson boarding house where he's been telling his girlfriend, Mildred, of his past days of glory on the gridiron. Of course, I don't say I was the best water boy we ever had, Mildred. Oh, no? No. As a matter of fact, they fired me after the first day. I guess it was because I took so long to bring them the water. You couldn't run fast enough? Oh, it wasn't that. I used to take it out a cup at a time. <laughs> the regular bucket was too heavy for me. Well, maybe you weren't so strong, but I'll bet you were awfully cute when you were in high school. Oh, sure. Naturally. Oh, well, I probably wouldn't have paid any attention to you if I'd known you. I thought I was madly in love with my French teacher. Did you ever have a crush on one of your teachers? Nah. <laughs> well, that's funny. I thought every kid got a crush on one of his teachers at school. Oh, not me. I was too mature. Besides, all my teachers were men. <laughs> yes, that might 
have had something to do with it. Gee, I wonder if my French teacher still remembers me. I'll bet mine remembers me. I took French for two years, and when I got finished, all I could say was C.C. <laughs> But a football game like this certainly brings back memories, doesn't it? Yeah. Gosh, I sure hope we win it. I've never seen the town as excited about the game as they are this year. I know. That's all anyone talks about. Even Mother and Daddy can't think of anything but beating... Oh, hi, Daddy. Rock, rock, rock. Just boom, bop. Hit him in the belly with a trolley car. <laughs> we will, Daddy. Don't worry. Oh, you bet we will. Say, Poopsie and I are going down to the school to see the team off for Middletown. You kids care to join us? Oh, sure. I hear the coach is an old friend of yours, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Old Rocky was coaching the football team when I went to Weaverville. He was? Oh, that was football in those days. No passes and trick plays. It was bone against bone, muscle against muscle. Skulls cracked like celluloid. Why, I was lucky if I lasted through the first quarter. You mean you played on the team? No, just watching. I had a weak stomach. <laughs> well, oh. I'm ready to leave, Herbert. Why, Mother, you're wearing your old Weaverville sweater with a W on it. Yes, and it still looks as good as the day I bought it. Except that the W seems to have shrunk a little. Well, I, I doubt it, Poopsie. The background's just gotten bigger, that's all. <laughs> Maybe. After all, it was 28 years ago that I first wore this sweater. No, 28 years ago. Gosh, it doesn't seem that long, does it? Well, not to me, naturally. I'm only 10 years older. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, come on, everyone, let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you really think we'll beat Middletown this year, Mrs. Anderson? Well, of course we will. I've even bet $5 on it. $5? Oh, Poopsie, you shouldn't have. You know how badly I need new shoes. I could have taken that $5 and added it to the $5 I have under my handkerchiefs in the bottom drawer of the... Uh, oh, now I've told you where it's hidden. Don't be silly. What $5 do you think I bet? Gee, <laughs> cr quite a crowd down to see the boys off, huh, Dennis? Uh, where did Poopsie and Mildred disappear to? Oh, they're over at the bus talking to some of the boys on the team. Gosh, those football players sure are big guys, aren't they, though? Yes. I'm certainly glad I'm not that vulgar, muscular type of man. Yeah, me too. I like my bones where I can see them. Uh, <laughs> now, just look at the fuss Mildred and Poopsie are making over them. Impressed by a few biceps. Yeah, women are such primitive creatures. Certainly. What good are muscles, anyway? All they do is put a strain on your skin. <laughs> muscles, blah. And also, fat. And likewise, poo. Darn right. And I'd say the same thing if I had some. <laughs> oh, there's the coat. Hey, Rocky. Gosh, Mr. Anderson, I wonder why he's looking so sad. Hello, Harvey. Hi, Rocky. Uh, you remember this young fella, don't you? Huh? I used to be the water boy. Yeah, well, we've had so many water boys, you know. Oh, I was the one you said carried less water in his bucket than on his brain. <laughs> oh, Dennis Day! Glad to see you again, Day. Say, is, is anything wrong, Rocky? You seem kind of upset. Upset? I'm half crazy. Didn't you hear what happened? I just found out ten minutes ago that a spy from Middletown sneaked into our secret practice and stole every one of our plays. What? what? Yes, they've got all our plays, and it's now too late to line up any new ones. We'll be slaughtered. Oh, my gosh, the rat. You said it. Of all the dirty, low-down, sneaking, unethical tricks to pull. But where were you at the time, Rocky? In Middletown on a roof across from their field with my telescope. <laughs> Did you spot any of their plays? Not one. They chased me away the minute they saw me. Oh, dear. Oh, there you are, Herbert. I've been... Why, what's the conference? A Middletown spy stole all our plays, Mrs. Anderson. We're sunk. What? It's true, fairy flower. <laughs> But they can't do this to us. Do you realize what's at stake? The glory and honor and pride of Weaverville High and my five bucks. Yeah. Action, that's what we need. We'll send a spy up to Middletown to steal their place. Oh, if they caught him, they'd murder him and skin him alive. I couldn't order anyone to go on a mission like that. I've got two volunteers for you, Herbert and Dennis. <laughs> huh? But, Poopsie, you just heard how dangerous it'd be. You might lose me. Herbert, Weaverville High gave you to me. Weaverville High has the right to take you away. 
Well, it is our only chance. Now, look, they'll have a secret practice session before the game. All we got to do is figure a way to get you two guys in. I have it. They can pose as doctors. Doctors? It's perfect. Tell them you're there from the Board of Health to check on the players. I'll go home right now and clean out the medicine chest and throw it all into a little black bag. I'll meet you back here in ten minutes. Well, I guess it's for Weaverville, Rocky. If they get me, see that I'm buried back of the chemistry lab, will you, old man? <laughs> That's where I spent my happiest hours in school. You're a brave man, huh? How about you, Dennis? Any last requests? Yeah, bury me in the principal's office. Many's the time I wished I were dead there. <laughs> Okay, fellas, I, I don't have to tell you what this means to the old school. <laughs> oh, I'd die for dear old Weaverville, Rocky, you know that. Shall we all sing our alma mater together for what may be the last time? Yeah, let's. Very well. Bow your heads, gentlemen, and face the east. Mm. Weaverville, oh, Weaverville. We loved you then, we love thee still. Thy hallowed walls, thy color serene, hail to magenta and aquamarine. <laughs> oh, we were there, oh, we were there. <laughs> Thou art so much more than a learning mill. Learning mill. Defend thyself from all attacks. All attacks. Oh, Lord, give brains to thy quarterback. <laughs> oh, graduate, thou shalt always thrill at mention of the name of Weaverville. And wherever thou dost travel at, thou shalt bear thy head by removing thy hat. <laughs> Weaverville, oh, Weaverville. We're nuts about the Weaverville. Gee, I sure hope this works, Mr. Anderson. Oh, me too. If we can only make these Middletown coaches think that we're really doctors. Well, in case he wants proof, I brought along a pack of camels. Well, I hope it's enough. <laughs> Look, look, there he is coming towards us. On your toes now, Dennis. Sorry, gents, but this is a secret practice. Can't allow anybody on the field doing... Oh, just a second, my good man. We happen to be from the Board of Health. I'm Dr. Cronkite, and this is my colleague, Dr. Velschmerl. <laughs> from the Board of Health? Uh, yes, we're investigating football. A very unsanitary game from what we hear. Most unsanitary. Unsanitary? That's ridiculous. You can't argue with facts, coach. A recent survey of the Harvard football team of 1839 showed that every one of those players are dead at the present time. <laughs> every one. Well, of course they're dead. And not only that, but at the end, they all showed exactly the same symptoms. Yes, extreme old age. <laughs> oh, now look here. Now, I'm sure that you'll agree there must be something basically wrong with a sport that takes fine young boys and turns them into old men within 70 years. <laughs> This threat to public health cannot go unchallenged. We've got to find out what makes this game so unsanitary. Now, uh, tell me, how many men are there on each side? Eleven, but... Please, don't interrupt. How many footballs are used in the game? One. What? Twenty-two men all using the same football? <laughs> Shocking. It's a disgrace. No wonder football teams go around with their eyeballs twitching, their hands shaking, and their backfields in motion. <laughs> well, gosh, Doc, maybe you got something. I never thought about it before. Of course. Here, give one of these pills to every man on your team immediately. Yeah, well, what are they? Uh, they're new secret vitamin pills. Each pill contains as much nourishment as three dozen eggs, five quarts of milk, four T-bone steaks, and an order of chopped liver with schmaltz. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, sure, Doc, whatever you say. Thanks a lot. Dennis, what did you do that for? Look, he is giving the team the pills. Oh, they were only some aspirin tablets I found in the bag. But even so, we... Well, we had to get rid of them, didn't we? We want to write down those plays. Anyway, it made them less suspicious of us. Well, maybe. Say, that is a pretty nifty football team he's got, isn't it? Yeah, I'll say. Hey, look at that play they're running now. That's pretty cute. Well, don't you worry. I'm putting it right into my little black book here. That a boy. Our boys will... Oh, my gosh, Dennis, look. One of the boys just got hurt on that last play. Yeah. Holy smoke, they bring them over here. Oh, I know. We're supposed to be doctors. Oh, my gosh, that's right. 
I wouldn't be in that kid's shoes for anything. Oh, we've got to keep up the bluffer. Yeah, here they come. Here's a patient for you, Doc. He was just hurt in the scrimmage. In the scrimmage, huh? Hmm, bad. <laughs> Bad. That's right near the liver. Ah, uh, it's nothing, Doc. I, I'm just a little shaken up. Oh, don't be too sure of that, my boy. We better play it safe and take a post mortem. <laughs> a post mortem? Well, uh, I think maybe the first thing to do is feel his pulse, Doctor. All right, Doctor. We'll work it out together. You find it and I'll feel it. <laughs> well, on the other hand, why bother? This man's ailment is quite clear. Appendicitis. Hey, but, Doc, I had my appendix out last year. Oh. Well, what I meant was tonsillitis. I had my tonsils out the year before. Okay, you've had a heart attack. Let's see you get out of that one. <laughs> well, how is he, Doc? Oh, he's very bad, Coach. This boy must have complete quiet. I want him to stay right where he is for 48 hours. 48 hours? But we got a football game to play in this field at 2 o'clock. Well, in that case, warn the players not to step on him. Complications might arise. <laughs> Come, Dr. Velschmerls. We must be going. Coming, Dr. Cronkite. I'll see you later, Coach. Okay, Mike. Get up and get back in there. Hey, but Coach, the doctor Dr. Doctor, just... my eye. Those guys aren't doctors. They're a couple of spies from Weaverville trying to get a line on our plays. What? But they even gave us pills. Nothing but aspirin. I saw the bottle in their bag. I also saw a little book with one of our plays in it. And you're letting them get away with it? Don't be a dope. I tore out the play they had and filled up the book with phony ones. Now every time they think they know what's coming, they'll get something else. We'll murder them, Mike. Ah, oh, Coach, you're a genius. That game will be a massacre. Yes, operator. Weaverville 227. Oh, thank you. Hello, Poopsie. This is your lover boy, the Matahari of Weaverville. <laughs> sure, we just delivered a whole notebook full of their plays to Rocky. Yeah, I think your five dollars is safe, dear. Tell her to bet some more. Pack the furniture, everything. It's in the bag. Bet all you can get down, Poopsie. It's a cinch. Yeah. No, we're not staying for the game. Someone might get wise to us. And we'll be home on the next bus. Huh? Well, you're my big boofle baby doll, Smooky Wookie, too. <laughs> Wonderful, boys. Why, Weaverville will run all over Middletown now. Yep, thanks to us. We did a pretty brilliant job, didn't we, Dennis? Brilliant? Oh, shucks, there must be a stronger word than that. Oh, I agree with you. Sure, who needs muscles? We may not have them, but we got brains. Mr. Anderson was so clever about writing down those plays in this book, I didn't even see him do it myself. Me? I didn't write those plays down, you did. No, I didn't. But you must have. Well, I ought to know. I never left my side for an instant. <laughs> But if you didn't write them, and I didn't write them, who did? Well, let's face the facts. There were only three of us anywhere near the bag. You, me, and the Middletown coach. Now, if it wasn't you and it wasn't me, it was... Oi, what a disgusting face on this fact. Yes. Dennis, do you know what this means? Uh-huh. No muscles, no brains, nothing. <laughs> Will someone please tell me what this is all about? Oh, we've been tricked, Mildred. That coach must have gotten wise and written the plays in our book himself while we were working on an injured player. Meanwhile, Weaverville would get the worst beating in its history. Oh, I feel faint. Take my hand and lead me to the sofa. We'll have a pretty long walk. That was one of the things Mother hopped to bet on the game. Oh, my gosh. Well, something's got to be done. She'll be down any minute to listen to the football scores on the radio. Oh, my soul and former body. <laughs> My two brave, wonderful heroes. Hello, Poopsie. Uh... Well, what are we waiting for? Jack Collins is on right now with his sports broadcast. Let's turn him on and get the good news. Oh, we can't hear him now. We've got to tune in the Green Hornet. Oh, yeah, yeah. We just must have to hear that. Yeah. The Green Hornet? Why this sudden interest in the Green Hornet? In the last episode, a stinger was caught in the door and he was turning blue. <laughs> I want to hear that score. There. And here's another final score. Pomona Barber College, 27, North, Southeast, West, Virginia, 13. <laughs> and here's a late one that just came in. Well, is this amazing. Weaverville High was supposed to beat Middletown by a margin of one touchdown. But the final score, which was just handed to me, reads, Middletown, 13, Weaverville, 110. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, 
flash. Why, he, he, he must have made a mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, I just made a mistake on the last score. Oh. It should read Middletown 13, Weaverville 112. <laughs> Good heavens. My scouts informed me that the Middletown team acted in a very strange manner. They started off well, but after the game had been underway for a few minutes, they began to stagger all over the field and fall down unaccountably without being touched. The final score again, Middletown 13, Weaverville 112. Oh, happy day. Money, money, money. I'm loaded with it. <laughs> oh, you wonderful boys, you. Well, I know I shan't be able to sleep a wink tonight with all this excitement. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Dennis, I can't believe it. Me either. It must be a dream. If I thought I could stand the pain, I'd pinch myself. It's no dream, my boy. But what do you suppose happened to the Middletown team? We'll probably never know. I've forgotten my excitement. Uh, where's the little black bag I gave you? It has all the medicine in it, and I want a sleeping pill to calm my nerves. A sleeping pill? A sleeping pill? But there weren't any sleeping pills in the bag, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, yes, there were. I had them in an old aspirin bottle. <laughs> An, an aspirin bottle? Yes. The mists are beginning to clear away. Gosh. So that's why they said... Gosh. What are you talking about? Oh, never mind. Mr. Anderson. Yes, Dennis? Shall we face the east? Yes, Dennis. Weaverville, oh, Weaverville. Aren't you glad they took that pill? Weaverville, dear Weaverville. We love these skills. We always win. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly, brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases, Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today for cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. With George Duning in the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing Bluebird of Happiness. Feel like a
everybody. Next week, tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. For soft, gleaming, glamorous hair, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty new cream shampoo in tubes or jars, whichever you prefer. Be a lovely luster cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. Listen again next week to Colgate's Hour of Fun, Judy Canova, followed by Dennis Day. And for another great comedy program, hear Blondie next Wednesday evening over your favorite NBC station. This month, your city's community chest is making its annual appeal for funds to meet the urgent needs of your community's vital health and welfare services. The community chest is many campaigns in one. Were it not for your community chest, as many as 35 separate appeals would have to be made. The need for health, welfare, and recreation services is greater than ever before, and operating costs have gone up. In addition, USO is being restored for our armed forces, and your community chest has been asked by Secretary of Defense James Forrestal to help raise funds for it. So open your heart and your purse. When a community chest representative calls, give, and give generously. Vern Smith speaking. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.